live in an RV and travel in a car. Why? Because I think it's easier and more cost efficient. Let me explain. I think the ideal situation is to have a lot where you can park a somewhat inexpensive travel trailer, keep it stationary, and travel out of a regular fuel efficient car. Why? Because you don't have to tow anything. And if you were to have a motorhome, a Class A, Class B, or Class C, usually you're always going to need a tow vehicle, a regular vehicle, with the exception of maybe a small Class B. But a Class B is expensive and not that fuel efficient, so to drive it all the time would be tough. Definitely a Class C or Class A motorhome Without a tow vehicle, a regular vehicle, it's almost impossible. So now, you, to me, I want to avoid towing things. I want to have an easy drive, be somewhat efficient with fuel, and be flexible on where I can park, where I can go, uh, and not having to worry about, you know, a big rig. So, you know, RVs are, are tough because they're cute, simple, and mobile, but they're not cheap. They, on average, do depreciate, and they're costly and burdensome to drive long term. So, for me, and everyone's different, the best situation I figured out so far is to own a piece of property that on average goes up so you have a somewhat stable asset and you have a place to go if there was really an emergency. To own a piece of property where you can legally put an RV, put an RV, specifically a travel trailer, under 25000 so you're not investing too much of your net worth. And because I got to be honest too, I mean, I looked at expensive travel trailers, expensive fifth wheels and all those things and the quality is not that much difference. Uh, so, and like I say, RVs do have air quality issues. There is a formaldehyde off-gassing. So, you know, even expensive or inexpensive, that's something you have to look at. But, you know, again, if you're allocating less than 25000 to a travel trailer, you know, that's not too risky. And... It's another resource, and even if it depreciates in value, you know, it it's, gives you a place to park, etc. right? So that's stationary, and then you have a regular fuel-efficient car that you could replace a car very easily. You can service a car very easily. It's fuel-efficient. You can drive it without worrying about how many miles you put on it, and you, you don't have to think about it too much when you go into a gas station, when you go into a park, you know, because you're very versatile. You know, again, definitely compared to a Class A, Class C, or towing something big. You know, again, the only exception is the Class B. The biggest issue that I have to, that I think about with a Class B, number one is, is always you look at the cost. You know, a Class B, uh, a camper van, is, a new one, is around $100,000 on average, easy. And that's a, a big asset allocation. So you really have to think about that. And then you have to think about, do I want to drive this Class B RV all the time as my primary driver and not have a second regular vehicle? That's a big decision. Usually, you want to have a regular vehicle, uh, even if you drive your Class B a lot. So now that's a lot of money in vehicles. And a Class B is not that roomy, so... Yes, you gain standing up. Yes, a Class B can be self-contained, but it's interesting. And yes, they hold even their value a little bit better. But, you know, they're a vehicle. They need, they have an engine. Uh, or they have mechanics. They need maintenance. They need upkeep. And I look at my seven-year-old car now and, you know, how much maintenance I've had. And even though it's been very reliable, very good, you know, I've put money into it. You know, you always have tires, 
uh, oil change brakes, uh, maybe axles, a hose brakes, sensor issues, right? So that's going to happen in a Class B if you have it more than several years, you know, it's just life. You know, again, with the travel trailer, there's no motor, and if you're not going to tow it, you're not going to really have any issue. And a regular car, if you need to replace it, because I don't think a person, the average person, should spend more than $25,000 on a car or more than $25,000 on an RV. Why? Because if you add both of them up, that's $50,000. And if, you know, and even that's a lot because the average person shouldn't spend more than half their annual income on vehicles. Why? Because short term it may be rewarding, but long term it's a bad investment. And I don't, I don't want to say you shouldn't enjoy your life, but I, you have to give some thought to the long game. Because financial freedom is the ultimate freedom, not your RV. And with a regular car, too, you always have that option to DoorDash, Instacart, Uber, right? And that's always an option for some people. For some people, it's not their thing, but always think about that, you know? Like, if you really needed to, with a regular car... You know, you can make a couple grand a month in a good market just doing DoorDash. And that keeps you away from destitution. Now, could you do that in a Class B? Well, you could, but you're very inefficient fuel-wise. You have a $100,000 vehicle trying to make some money and delivering food in a Class B RV. I mean, I don't even know how feasible that looks uh, or would be. I mean, it's like crazy. You know, how long does it take to recoup that money that you're destroying that Class B? So it's not really feasible. You know, van conversions, I look, but a brand new camper van, like a Dodge Promaster or a Ford, they're like 50 grand. So you put any amount of work into them, and you always got to pay sales tax. 50 grand, plus you put some work, you know, you're at 10, 20 grand more, $70,000. So maybe it's a little bit cheaper than a Class B. Now, I would consider a Class B, once I would have property first, which I already have, and not have a, but then I would not have a travel trailer. Then I would just have the Class B. And I would probably keep this car because I'd probably always want a regular car. Then I would have two things with motors in it. And that's not too exciting to me. Um, you know, I think about, well, I just get a Class B, get rid of the travel trailer, get rid of this car, and then I have land and just a Class B. But then the question is, do you want, do I want, everyone's different, do I want to only drive a van all the time? And I drove a van. I have the experience, not the theory. I had a Ford E250 van years ago and I did contracting work. And it's not that enjoyable to drive every day, all day, all year round. For me, everyone's different. It always feels like, you know, you're driving, you know, you're driving somewhere to go to work. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to say it's bad because, too, they make vans now a lot more drivable. And I, I consider it. But you have to get over the cost of the van. You have to get over, are you going to have a second vehicle? Obviously, if you don't have property, that's something you have to think about because if you allocate that amount of money to a Class B, you may not ever have property. And long term, that may bite you. And then, of course, you always still need somewhere to park. Like I say, a Class B, you're, you're not stealth now. You still need somewhere to park, and you, it's just like living in a car but bigger, right? So it, you haven't solved the parking problem. Now, if again, if you own property, then okay, but it's just weird to have property and only a Class B. It's just a little bit weird, you know? So I, I don't know, but I, I still think, at least for now, I still debate this. For somewhat the RV lifestyle, for somewhat a less entangled lifestyle, one option is maybe the best is to have the stationary travel trailer for $25,000 or under on the property travel out of a regular vehicle because it's easy it's flexible and if you need to replace or service the regular vehicle it's a lot more fluid a lot easier and have that regular vehicle under $25,000 you say wood vehicle costs under $25,000 really only a Kia Soul Now, could you do it different? Yeah, well, guys, when I drive around, I don't see that many Kia Souls on the road. I see pickup trucks that are over $50,000. I see SUVs that are over $50,000. I see, you know, 
And I said to myself, I see all this. And is the average person making this? No. What's the average person doing? They're living on payments. Am I mad at them? No. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm sharing my perspective on how I look at things, how I try to discipline myself from the impulses to learn from my past to make a better future. Your freedom is your health and your financial well-being. Not your vehicle. Your best home-based situation, if you were similar to me, where you kind of want the RV lifestyle but you want to be very delicate in how you allocate money towards it because RVs are not that great of an investment at all long term. You know, but, you know, it's tough, you know. It, it, there's not an easy way, you know. Um, I would still consider the Class B, but I would have to get over those hurdles. Do I keep a regular car? Do I only want to drive a van all the time? You know, it's something to think about. So, again, I just go back to, you know, again, kind of when I was looking at videos, too, about the RV lifestyle, one setup that I liked was somebody who owned property, they had a stationary travel trailer, and they traveled out of their fuel-efficient car. And I'm not saying for everyone this works because you, you have your individual circumstance, but for a, definitely for a single person with no pets, no kids... That's somewhat ideal because you could travel at will. You could always stay if you had to at a hotel and you're on the road if you got in, into an issue or burnt out. Um, even though I don't like hotels at all, but it's just a backup plan. And, you know, if your car goes to shit, you know, you can replace it with another efficient car. You can still door dash. And you haven't allocated that much money towards a big vehicle that's unefficient, goes down in value overall, and you know you still have to place to park it. So those are just some thoughts on the ideal situation, I guess, with a home base, with a vehicle. You know, again, for me, I don't want to tow anything. I don't want to tow a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, and I don't want to have a motorhome and then tow a regular vehicle. That's like defeating the fact. And then a Class B, I don't know if I want to drive it all the time. So I'm just talking this out because many people who are in a similar situation, not many, because most people are in a conforming house with a conforming life with children. So they're not even, this is not on their radar. And I respect that. I'm just sharing my perspective here. Hopefully it helps. If it does, click the thumbs up, share the video. Thank you for watching. Do whatever you want in your life.